What's up dogs? Theody here and welcome to the tutorial. For this very first part, you guys are going to be learning how to make maps. It's a very, very simple process that does not take a whole lot of time. But with this tutorial, you're going to learn some tips and tricks that will also help you map a lot faster. When we open up RPG Maker for the first time, we're going to be greeted with a blank screen like this. To start up a new project, all we got to do is hit this little icon up here. And then we can name our project immediately. For this series, I'll call it Tutorial. And also, don't worry, you can always rename the project later, and it won't actually affect a thing. By default, the location it will choose is the documents, but you can always change it to whatever you prefer. When you're all set, press OK, and then it will start copying game files for your project. If you're wondering what these files are exactly, they are what's known as the RTP assets, which are basically the free resources and graphics and music and all those sort of things that RPG Maker gives you all for free. Now with that done, you'll come to the screen, and admittedly, it can be a little bit puzzling just looking at things, but don't worry, it's actually really, really simple. Currently, we're in what's known as the event mode, but if we want to go to the map mode, we click this button here, and now you'll start to see these tiles pop up. Except we don't exactly want to work with the outdoor tile sets, usually most horror games are done indoors, so to change that, you'll see that we have a map menu down here, and that we're currently selected on map 001. Now we want to head over to our map properties and there's two ways we can do this. The first of which is we can right click and hit edit. Or as you saw from that drop down box, the hotkey for it is space. So to change it into indoor tile sets, we click this drop down box, hit the inside. And when we press OK, you'll note that everything has changed. But before we get into making our map, the first thing we'll want to do is change some map properties. First of all, the name of the map. And FYI, the name of the project is private to us, so we could call it whatever, but I would want to call it something useful, such as main floor. And the display name is if the player actually transfers from a different map onto this map, then we're actually going to see the name of the map in the top left corner appear. So if we want to have something appear, then we go type something here. But if we don't want anything to appear, then we could just ignore it completely. You could change the width and height over here. For now, I'll pick some arbitrary number. And FYI, as I make this map, don't feel as though you have to copy me exactly. However, there will be some criteria that I'll ask for you to do. But do know that you can make your map however you want, which includes the width and height. And by the way, I wouldn't put a whole lot of effort into making this map. This is a tutorial series after all, so we're kind of just using this to learn things. Now you'll see all these other settings in this map property, but for now, we'll just ignore it. By the way, if you're curious to know exactly what tile sets are, these are tile sets. And they're called tile sets because as you can see, we're kind of moving one tile at a time as we move throughout the map and as we build it. And hence, tile sets. Now throughout these tile sets, you'll notice some pretty particular things. Up over here is more so your floor tiles. Over here are more so your walls and ceilings. And what you currently see on your screen is exactly how my map looks like at the end of this video. Now everyone has their own preference for map making, so don't feel as though you have to make it a certain way. My best suggestion for you would actually be to go onto Google and search for RPG Maker Indoor Maps. There are a lot of great ones that you can inspire off of. But before you get started, allow me to show you the rest of the tools. Currently we're on the pencil tool, which as it kind of shows, you draw where you click. Rectangle makes rectangles, and paints it as you click drag. Circle, or elliptical, paint bucket, and this one is shadows, which I'll show you towards the end. Now what I love to do is to start with the paint bucket and this black square here, and paint everywhere. Then I take the tile I would like to work with for the floor, switch to the rectangle, and make my place. Usually I start off with a big square like this if I'm making an indoor house. However, I'm aiming for something a lot more simpler, and I actually could use a place that's smaller. Now you're probably wondering what I did there. Well, if you right click anywhere on the map, it will actually select it as your current tile. So check this out. I right click the black, I left click, and drag, because I'm in the rectangle tool, and now it covers all that. Pretty cool, huh? That said, imagine I already started making some walls, and I actually wanted to trim it down a little bit. So what I can do is right click, hold it, and drag it, and you'll actually see this. Now guess what? 
because I'm in the rectangle tool, if I left click and drag it all the way to the other corner, it will actually paint it out. If I use the pencil tool, then with one single left click, it will paint the whole thing. Pretty cool, huh? Now if I right click the black space, switch on over to my rectangle tool, go over here, hold down left click, and create that rectangle, and then release the left click, I'll have painted it and made it smaller. Now let's say we made a map and we need more space off to the left or just to one side. Well, if we right click here and hit shift, we can actually move it offset to the left, right, up or down. Now this is where it gets a little bit confusing. Positive one will shift the map to the right. Positive one on the Y, well, believe it or not, shift it down. Now that's going to be a little bit confusing, but if we move our mouse all the way up here to the top left corner, and we look to the bottom right where it says automatic, and just to the left we see 0, 0, well believe it or not, what's in front of us is actually a coordinate grid. And if we move down, we're going to see that the Y axis goes positive plus 1, plus another one, plus another one. And if we move to the right, the X will move plus 1. It's a little bit odd. I get it. And it can kind of feel backwards from what you learned from school. But actually, it's really intuitive for the RPG Maker system. And once you get the hang of it, it'll all be really, really easy. A few other things to note are this Shadow Pen tool. Remember this? Well, if I completed this wall and say, I don't want these shadows here, well, I could click that Pen tool and erase all of it. But that's not all. I could also randomly draw it however I like. For the most part, I wouldn't really recommend doing this. But I can also see it having some properties in certain games. If you happen to have done something that you didn't like, well, there's an undo button here. But you can also press Control Z. And by the way, if I were you, I would get really used to the hotkeys. One more thing before I set you off to make your map is layers B and C. For now, we can ignore R. R is what stands for regions, and it plays a significant role in RPG Maker, but not for what we're doing now. The best way to think about A, B, and C is that they're layers. A is at the very, very bottom, and B we can paint on top, and C we can also paint on top. Except, here's the sneaky thing about RPG Maker. Let's say that I made this chair. First I'm going to have to switch out of my shadow pen tool back to the rectangle because I prefer using rectangles and I make the chair. And now for whatever reason, let's put a sword on it. <laughs> well that's weird, but hey, it kind of works. Now let's put the stool on top of this and you're going to see exactly why I decided to do that in a minute. You can still see the sword underneath it, but it totally erased the top portion of the chair. So what I'm going to do now is switch on over to these cracks and I'm going to paste it on top. Can you guess what's going to go away? The swords. So right now you can imagine that there's a two layer system for everything after A. And as you paint on top of it, it removes the bottom layer. You'd believe that with layers B and C, they have their own property, but they actually share that. So if I actually click on, say, this T over here, and I were to paste it, well, the stool is gone, but the cracks are still there. And if I were to take this wine glass and paste it, cracks are gone, but the T is still there. Now let's try to mix a few things just to further this example. If I take the sword, I think you guys can guess what's going to disappear. The T set. Now if I go over to C, and I take this T up here, well, now the wine glass is gone. So anything after A, they actually share a layer, and it's a two-set layer. And I get it, it's a really weird system, but it's also better that you guys know now before you get too far ahead. With that said, have fun making your map. The only thing that I ask for you to do is to make two spots that looks like it's going into a different room. It could be stairs. Or it could be a spot where you want to plant your door, which I'll show you at the end of the video. With that, have fun. Alright, now you guys should have a map. Before we get started on the next phase, we always want to test out our map just to make sure that it feels good. So to do that, we just click and drag 
our player down to the entrance or wherever you like to start and we hit the play button. The shorthand for this is Control R. It will prompt us to save. If you have not saved, click yes and then the game will run. And neat! There it is. Top left it said main indoors because that was the display name. We can run around. Test out the passability for all these different objects. Passability meaning if I can walk through them when I shouldn't be. And so far everything seems good, right? Well, that's where you're wrong. Because these stairs, you can't exactly enter stairs from this side like that. Or rather, you shouldn't because, well, that looks awkward. So to fix that, we're going to close the test game. We click on the database up here. Go all the way down to where it says tile sets and click it. And we know that we're using the indoor tile set, so we're going to click the inside right here. And we know that the stairs are on set B. And now, you can see it over here. And you're going to see all these circles and X's, and some of which are even stars. Circles means passability. X means cannot pass altogether. And stars means priority. So when the player is on top of the tile, the tile will actually look like it's above the player or in front of the player and block their image. But if we were to click X on the stairs, it means that the player won't be able to use the stairs altogether. What you want to instead is to make sure that the player can only move through it from the left side and the right side. So we click on the passage for direction here. We can actually erase each direction that the player cannot move for onto the object. So with these two selected, the player cannot move up to this tile or down to this tile. And the same thing is true if the player is on the tile. They can't move up or down. They can only move left and right. Now you're going to see some other things like ladder. And ladder just means that if the player is on this tile, the player will have to face up. So that it looks like they're climbing up and down a ladder. Bush is with grass. So if we go to outside, we're going to see bush somewhere within these tiles and we see it here so the players standing on the bush will actually see it cover their legs just very slightly and it gives it a pretty cool effect in my opinion for counter damage floor and terrain tag we'll ignore those for now but if you want to get a good heads up on what they do you can actually just leave your mouse on it and a little help box will appear and it'll give you all the information that you need to know and this is also true for everything that you do in RPG Maker. As long as you hover your mouse somewhere, it will give a brief explanation. And I highly recommend that you use this feature. So the last few things I want to do before we end the video is that if we go back into a map properties, we'll autoplay BGM. Whenever we enter this map, it will automatically start playing, well, a BGM. And the same thing is true with BGS. So if I just randomly pick Scene 2, and for BGS, I randomly pick Wave. It's going to make no sense, by the way. <laughs> and we hit play. Now this music and sound just plays by itself. Because we happen to be on this map. For the most part, I don't want any of that. Parallax background is kind of another way just to say, I want to have an image in the background. So where all this black space is, if it wasn't black, but instead clear. Then when we go to the map properties and change the background to say space, because space is cool. When we hit show in the editor, then we'll see exactly what the player will see. And to be honest, there's a really, really cool and more advanced thing that you can do with parallaxing, otherwise known as parallax mapping. But I won't get into that in this tutorial. With disable dashing, by default, the player is allowed to dash, and that's just another way to say sprint. So if we hit down shift and move around, well now the player is sprinting. And if we release shift, and this is what he looks like when he's walking. Shift to run, or dash, remove shift, no longer dashes. So if we want to disable dashing completely, we'll just click off that box. And the last thing to show you guys is with scroll type. For this map, it won't actually work out. So I'm going to create another map just to show you. For this example, I'll do loop horizontally. Press OK. Event editor mode. Right click. Set starting position player to have the player start on this map instead. Play. Yes. And now when the player moves all the way to the left, well now it loops. And that's exactly what it means. 
So already you can probably think of some unique things that you can do with this feature. But hey, I'll let your imagination take it from there. I'm gonna set my player back here. And before we end the tutorial, I just wanna create a door. To do that, we right click on the tile that we want the door to be in, do quick event creation, and I want a door. For now, we can ignore the location transfer, but you can change the image right here. So pick a door that you like to use. For me, I'll choose this one. Pretty fancy. And you're done. Just kidding. One very, very last thing to show you guys. I'm going to shift my map all the way to the corners. I want you guys to pay attention to the character and the camera. Did you notice it? How about now? As you can tell, as I start to approach the bottom, well, the camera no longer centers the player. And instead, the player actually moves to the corner of the screen. However, if I were to go on this corner, the character remains centered. Do you know why that is? Well, if we go back to our map editor, the screen is actually limited due to the space that we have. And down here, well, there's no more that the camera can pan over. And up here, we have all this black space that allows the camera to move. So in our game, that's why the character can remain centered. And of course, this is all down to the developer's preference. So if you want the player centered at all times, then just adjust the size of your map. Me, personally, I prefer to have the camera centered 99% of the time. So I'm just going to adjust the size of my map. First, shifting it over then making it larger. Now, note this blank white space. If I were to accidentally reduce the map size, it will actually delete everything that I had before. And if I were to try to resize it back up, then it will just create this blank white space. And um, there's no way to undo that. Unfortunately, the undo button doesn't work. You'll actually have to close out RPG Maker and reopen it and restart from the last time you saved, which is a bit unfortunate, but it's just how it is. And a fair warning to you guys. So, for me to finalize my map, paint bucket, go back to the event settings so I don't accidentally overwrite any of the things that I created already. Control S to save, Control R to run. And then test it out. Awesome. Everything looks good so far. And if it didn't work out, I'll just adjust the map some more. Last thing to note is if you do happen to shift it over too much, control T by the way, that's all that'll happen. And you can actually fix it by sending it back. No big deal there. Also, I forgot about the zoom feature. If you want to, you can zoom all the way out. <laughs> Although I don't know when or how this will ever be useful for you, but you got it if you need it. And you can zoom all the way in. Unfortunately, it doesn't do as good as a job of zooming out. <laughs> but hey, it, you could see the nice pixels. Very nice. Ooh, very ah. And then the one-to-one -one ratio to bring it back to default. And there you have it. Easy, right? It takes some practice to get used to, but once you get the hang of it, you'll be mapping like a pro. By the way, I just want to quickly plug in that I'm currently working on a game myself. It is called Caster's Trap. It's a remake to an old version that I made back in 2014, this time with my own assets, a refined story, and an overall better experience. I appreciate it if you check out the Instagram for behind the scenes down below. The next part, we're going to be taking a peek at events for the first time, where we learn about doors, keys, and how to transfer between maps properly. See you guys in the next one. Let's